And welcome back to Bros in the Landfill, the only podcast that, yes, we are too slow. The hosts for this week are Trabian. <laughs> and me! <laughs> There's also Lunch Billion. Uh, if you thought that um, intro was lukewarm, you have yet to see what's coming. Because uh, <laughs> we're, we're talking about the most chill, relaxed, um, comfort food uh, movie of um, 2020. Uh, yes, that's right. Sonic the Hedgehog. Why are you... Ho- hyping up something lukewarm <laughs> it's not how that works <laughs> well it's because it's a black it's a blockbuster movie that has all these like special shiny special effects um lasers things moving really fast and then i come in and saying that it's such a casual um comfort watch rather than like a big hyped uh blockbuster mm, it certainly is it's just you know it's like a peanut butter sandwich it's like it's not gonna blow your mind but like it does its job it's serviceable yeah, You'll probably like forget it sandwich. afterwards. Yeah, it's just like a peanut butter sandwich. It's not going to blow you. <laughs> <laughs> very, very few peanut butter sandwiches have, um, if any, have, have managed to achieve that. God, what is wrong with me today? I don't know. Something uh, on, like, something deep in the brain. <laughs> uh, you can tell that I've been out for a few weeks. Hey, look. Let's let's just and I'm tired of, and I, let's just spin right into it, man. Let's just okay. curl into a ball and roll down a hill, <laughs> and uh, and smash into this this discussion. Uh, uh, what did you think of the movie, Tribian? I I think what I think is that um, uh, Sonic's front um forward um neutral attack. Uh, his his arm. Did you have you seen his arm? It, it's it's really big. Uh, it's really, but I I don't. <laughs> I don't. Okay, so let's. I am worse than dizzy today. What the fuck? It's okay. It's okay. We we still love you. Uh, so, uh, all right. I thought this movie was alright. Uh, obviously before it came out, there was a lot of. Uh, well, when they first revealed the trailer, the first trailer, uh, Sonic looked horrifying, and and like it looked like. Uh, a very generic kind of premise uh, and kind of a waste to not set in Sonic's world. There was there were all kinds of red flags. Um, um, and everybody uh, knows all I, this history, I, but... I, I reject the notion that the original Sonic design for the movie looked generic. That thing was like a freaking nightmare, and I kind of want to see the movie with him in it just to see how it changes the tone. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was generic in, in that, like... I mean, the result was terrible, I mean, but I think the process they used to get to that design was very, like, it was like shaving off all of the interesting Sonic edges and, like, trying to, I don't know, it reminded me of, like, Elvin and the Chipmunks or something. It seemed yeah, like I mean, I mean, the way you do a CG 3D character. Yeah, but, but, just the, but, ha- uh, but, but, but Elvin and the Chipmunks actually look like animals. Like, like, the, um, the original Sonic design was, like, like... I get where they're, they're trying to go a bit more realistic edge to it, but it looked like such a freakish nightmare. Oh, that, absolutely. That it, it seemed like it came from more of like a, like a comedy or a parody or a taking the piss out of the Sonic franchise rather than... I like sincerely a, doubt it. I, I, I think it was just completely oblivious. Like, they had no idea how bad it looked. Um, well, they, well, because I think in the interviews, the original reason why it looked like that was they're trying to make it look more, more realistic or fit into the world a bit more without realizing that there's no way you can really make an alien hedgehog look realistic. In well, the if, if there is one, it's not that. That was not yeah. the answer. I, I mean, like, he did look kind of realistic. He just also looked horrible. Like, there had to be... Yeah. Maybe there's a more realistic version of Sonic out there um, that looks more... Uh, that whatever, they were... They missed the mark. Um, but, um, you oh, know... And I think... Th- uh, sorry. Continue. Well, I, I think I think the other thing too is that Sonic is not the franchise you need to worry about making a realistic animal. It is, I I think even the, I even think the movie as is could have would have done a bit better if they weren't trying to make it as realistic. Like if well, they, I mean, he's just clearly like a like a cartoon character. Like like no one would oh, think yeah, to no, do no, this no. to, to well, Mickey the, Mouse, you know? Like well, when, no, I'm, I'm talking about well, I'm talking about like kind of the movie as as a whole. It just felt very oddly down to earth. Yeah, I for a, for a for for something in the Sonic franchise, which tends to be anime bullshit. Let's be real. 
Well, like, it's I mean, what okay, here's here's something here's something I want to get into. Um like I don't mind that it's taken place on on regular as Earth and I don't know, they're in a car and Sonic's world and the the human world are different. Like it's fine because like Sonic is such a schizophrenic fucking franchise. Like even in the games, like the 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 setting is not consistent. I mean like the classic oh, yeah. games are a bit different from like the modern games, but then it's like sometimes there's humans and then there's Sonic Forces and the world's populated by animals. And then there's like Sonic Boom, there's Sonic Cartoons. Like there's no, like the franchise as a whole is, is super splintered. So like, yeah. oh, I think it's fine that the, that the movie don't world the is... Don't forget, Sorry? don't forget the classic cartoon, Sonic Underground. We don't speak of Sonic Underground. Sonic Do you know how in this franchise that's so has so many duds? You know how un, how rare it is that something is like a we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> like Sonic Underground is taboo, which is bizarre <laughs> that that's even possible in this series. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That I think the world's a bit more. Yeah. Well, I I think it's fine that it's different. I I get you thinking that it's a it's a bit lame well, that it's too I, realistic though. Well, well. I think I think the movie like my I think my only real issue with the movie is that it is I think it plays it a bit too safe as like a this sort of like blockbuster uh, buddy flick with this um creature from uh, another world or mythical world or whatever it's it felt very safe and maybe I just haven't seen enough movies in a while maybe I'm a bit jaded watching all these like weird indie or foreign films right, that right. coming and watching another just another. Because at the end of the day, like, I do think the Sonic movie is better than most blockbuster, like, with generic buddy blockbuster films, but it still f- kind of felt like one. Well, I mean, it could have like, been, um, I think a pretty common uh, criticism of this movie is that, like, it, it didn't have to be Sonic. It could have been any creature, yeah. you know? Like, it, there's not that yeah, much oh, no, uniquely yeah. Sonic about well, it, um, other well, than a few that, little bits of, um, of the iconography. Well, a lot of which was like well, seemed to be in there after they got Tyson has to redesign the character, like, um, yeah. like in the intro sequence, like the ancient echidnas or the echidna tribes coming after Sonic, and like, I don't believe for a second that was in the original version of the movie because it's such a deep yeah. cut reference. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know how much of the movie was changed between like the original um, script and and even so, these things probably went through multiple scripts. Oh sure, but. Uh, um, I I think I think the Sonic movie was always kind of destined to be um, slightly above mediocre. Uh, like like it wasn't given the type of movie it is, given that it's in blockbuster well in Hollywood and Hollywood when it comes to new IPs tends to play things very safe. And also given the horrible track record that movie, um, and, well game movies have. Like, I'm not. I'm both. No, the, not the, 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 the expectations for something like this were not high. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, no, first but, of all, no, but, it's, but, sorry. No, but 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 imagine you're like in the like you're a shareholder, like in a shareholder meeting, getting things planned and stuff. Like, like you're you're aware that game movies tend to flop. Uh, yes. You're. You, do you think they're gonna give the creators the creative freedom to tell a story that they want to tell or tell a story that they know is going to sell? Like, yeah, that's well, a very, I mean, that's a, that's a if they were going to do a more, um, if they were going to do something closer to the original uh, source material, well, it would have taken a lot more money. Um, well, it, well, it's not. It's, well, there's a there's a difference between being in the um, cap, um, capturing the source material because I actually think the movie does an interesting job of portraying the source material. It's more of capturing mm. the spirit, <laughs> and I think, and yes. I think this is where it comes up for me with the movie is I think the internet like backlash to the original design was probably better for the movie i think we would have gotten just an even more generic sort of movie that doesn't like with less of the spirit of the show i think with i think if they had more time after the um they after the backlash and after the change change and stuff they didn't already have a framework to use the movie in i think we may have got something a bit closer to something in the spirit of sonic the hedgehog but it's definitely more than what we would have gotten without the um like original backlash well i mean i'm thinking that um the movie seemed to do much better than they expected to. Um, and a big oh, yeah. part of that, I think, was the positive press of, hey, we made it more like what people wanted. So, like, I definitely think a sequel is in, is in the cards. 
and could oh, yeah. be even more in the kind of fan focus. Well, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, yeah, I could definitely say that too. I think, like, as I like, as I said, like, I I think Sonic the Hedgehog probably is the best movie game <coughs> adaptation there is. There's not a lot of competition in that. Um, that I think field. the Ace Attorney movie uh, okay, blows it out okay, of the water. Draw, English, but outside okay, of that, first off. <laughs> First off, I agree. Second, I'm talking about like specifically like Western movies. Right. I but, personally, like, like, I like uh, Detective Pikachu better, but I think people uh, uh, I haven't wa- people I seem haven't, to. I have I haven't watched Detective Pikachu, so like that's that's fair. Also, Pokemon is Pokemon is such a mass media franchise that it's like like it's such a juggernaut that it's almost unfair to compare it to like any other game franchise when it comes to adaptations. Like Pokemon, yeah, well, of course it's. Very, Pokemon already has very successful like film and TV um, things. Like there's there's a lot of framework to build from in a movie rather than just a video game. Where something like with Sonic, where it has such diverse, like, like okay, Sonic might have comics, TV shows, games, um, and whatnot, but all of the canons in those tend to be differently, well, very different and operate under different logic structures. Where all the Pokemon media tend to all fall within the same sort of canon or very similar um, spaces, um, so dra- so drawing like there's a lot more resources to draw for in making a Pokemon Pokemon's movie. more of a world, right? Like it's more of something yeah. like you can. I mean, the movie that they made wasn't a traditional Pokemon story; it was like a weird detective thing. But like they could just grab that universe and and like have something. Oh yeah. Uh, to like like the Sonic like how to um. Adapting Sonic to a movie is not an easy ask because it's, yeah, like the the story isn't consistent, the tone isn't consistent. Sometimes it's like Shadow killing Sonic with a gun, and sometimes it's, uh, it's Sonic Colors, you know. Uh, and like the the thing about Sonic is that it's largely something based on aesthetic value. Like it it's fun yeah, to look oh, yeah. at, and the colors are nice, yeah. and there's there's cool music, and like those are not like. It, there's not even like an obvious character arc for someone like Sonic or like, yeah. or like a, but that a was, plot that like the, the the only plot that you really have to work with is like there are seven special yeah, gems that like this, you know have great power. Funny, and it's like, well, that's just funny, a, a trope. Um, funny animal run fast, crazy old man chase him. Right, like like it's not it's a very basic premise. Um, yeah, th- like that's like the the main consistent thing. And honestly, I think they did a pretty good job. I, I like yeah, how. Um, gonna, I, I w- I'd like to talk actually, more about the movie itself in in, in detail. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, but that's like, that, that that's actually going to lead in like lead into weirdly. It's that one of the most unsonic things the Sonic movie d- has done was like give like these characters like a real story and like, and give like real character arcs. Sonic's always been like this, kind of. Like oh it's like you're kind of it's always been like this weird in media res sort of situation where you have just this already have this conflict with Sonic and Eggman where having like this somewhat pro like prequel movie where it's like the origin story of the Sonic and Eggman rivalry is not something you really see tackled and yeah and and it's it, it's cool like well I mean uh, technically yeah. <laughs> and and like I think in the in the British. Uh, Sonic comics. There's this weird story where Sonic starts off brown, and and Robotnik was called Doctor Kintobor, and there's an experiment with an egg, yeah. and he yeah, it's like it's stupid. Like I I think this well, movie well, that... um is like I, yeah, I see it as a prequel story. It's like it's how did Sonic become the the way he is, or well, or how how do you end up in in the human world? How did Eggman end up on Sonic's case? Uh, like it feels like a a, a prequel to. Son- Actually, you know what this kind of reminds me of um, is like, uh, it feels like it's 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 almost as if the first couple of Sonic games were the only Sonic games, and so like yeah, th- that's how loosely they treated the source material. Because um, mm-hmm. I mean, like you look at like the interviews with like the cast and stuff, and they're like, yeah, I used to love playing Sonic back in the '90s. Like that's what everyone, yeah. the people making this yeah. movie, think of Sonic as a, as a thing from that time. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. I would. I would definitely. I would definitely just say that this is kind of like an adaptation of like the classic Sonic story. But even so, like it's like pre-classic Sonic. Yeah. Like, yeah. There, like there are many like there are many places in the Sonic canon you can pull from. But to go all the way back to the beginning, trying to give these justifications for why Sonic and Eggman are like they are. Like I, I liked this. I, I, I like this portrayal of having Eggman as like this, this 
quirky, um, distrustful guy who thinks higher of himself, and then kind of watching him descend into madness. Yeah, no, I yeah, I think they did a good job, like making him a character with like something of a backstory, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, there's a whole. I like the elements where it's like, uh, he's like an an orphan that like was bullied as a child, and then he like yeah. just be- he just became a genius so he could fucking posture over everyone forever because he doesn't know yeah, what love no. is. Like, yeah, I well, it's it's not a lot, but it's something, and and it's a nice yeah. little insight. Well. And it, I think I, I even like liked how they they put in the effort to show why he was so interested and so obsessed with robots and making like perfect robots and having like robot minions, because that's 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 such an odd choice for a character. Like considering like oh you have this guy with a robot army. It's like what causes someone to get to that point? Why not just have regular minions and whatnot? Yeah, I I, I think they did a good job. Actually, um, I I think the uh. The fact that he's got robots flying around was... I mean, of course, Dr. Robotnik is making robots, but, like, uh, some yeah. of the parts that felt the most authentically Sonic-y to me were when Sonic was fighting robots, or especially when he was fighting yeah. uh, the Eggmobile at the end, oh, um, yeah, was, bouncing off great. of... Like, you know, like, yeah. I think as, as much as they did a, a a pretty good job of making a, a safe movie that leaned into the video game stuff a little bit, um, I think I would have liked... I def- definitely would have liked it more if they had... Uh, just leaned into a little further. I'm not asking for deep cut references or for Espio the Chameleon well, to show up, but like, well, like Sonic, Sonic I, running around the Eggmobile in like the city that kind of looks like Sonic Adventure was like really a. Uh, that was the part that made me like, oh hell yeah, I'm watching a Sonic movie. Yeah, well, I think, well, I think they're trying to weirdly trying to strike that balance is that because this is a prequel, they're kind of showing Sonic transform from this like, this loner scaredy cat um, kind of ADHD kid who like d- who was always on the run to becoming this proactive um hero because yes because like at the start of the movie that's what like sonic was just told to stay on the run and he was always f- afraid and he was always going on but that's not the sonic we know from like now it's like sonic's like the guy going after egg and he's the guy going and saving yeah we think of him as this kind of a uh, unflappable confident character and i, I like how this is yeah it's it's this movie seems to build to that a little bit where yeah. uh, like he's always got that, that sense of fun and adventure, but like, um, you know, he, he doesn't have friendship and he, he doesn't, uh, I don't know. He, yeah, he's not that proactive character, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he doesn't have anything. He, will, he like, he doesn't have anything he really wants to protect. He can always just go into the next place. But, and that, I feel like because of like his, like, becoming accepted in this community that he's was he was watching like it creates this area where he's willing to protect it um yeah or, and or i don't think it's exactly it like the uh it's not exactly like the game sonic but i think it's a valid interpretation i mean and saying that it's like sonic is written differently from from game to game i i think the sonic in my head is it's it's an interesting difference because it, i think the sonic in my head is like he would be the one to to leave town because he's like well time for something new um but this one's all he's ever known is like this tiny little town, and he's like, "Why would you move to a big city? Like, why would you go somewhere? Like, people here love you. It, like, it's it's certainly different. But uh, but I think they captured the spirit of Sonic enough in general that like I'm okay with that being a different take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's the great thing about like having a franchise that's so aesthetic driven, is that you could really just do whatever you want or take whatever route you want with it. And it's actually kind of surprising that they decided to bring back so many like classic references or be as referential they could have they could have told their own story with just a fast running hedgehog named sonic and i mean yeah. let's be real how many game how many game movies do that where it's just oh we're telling our own story with the same like with the game's aesthetic uh i don't know i mean <laughs> probably a lot i mean, I mean I detective mean, like, so, uh, uh, often like detective game movies like, like literally just go Pokemon completely off the rails like, and are nothing like the source material and like um, it's but telling its own story with its own rules. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, no, I honestly I, I think there could have been more aesthetic uh like I think the the like act two was probably my least favorite part because and I think yeah. it was also the least uh Sonic y part. Like and it's like yeah. they could have just had scenes or, or situations that are a bit reminiscent of the games without like 
I, I don't want them to adapt a game story, for instance. Yeah. I, I think it's its own yep. thing. But, um, yep. you know, like, but like think... a, a good example is, you know, like Sonic, like, uh, sort of snowboarding down a city street or whatever, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or if there's a part where you rolled down a half pipe at the skate park or something, that would have yeah. put a smile on my face. It's like, yeah, it's like the thing. Um, yeah, but I, I think that kind of goes back to where I... Th where, where it seems like the creators had this balance of telling like this Sonic story that they wanted to tell or have like this s s movie for the Sonic fans while also dealing with the fact that Hollywood's not really open to big creative movies, especially when it comes to risky endeavors such as a game adaptation. No, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we got, honestly. I, yeah, I think no, that no. like they, like well, they did a... They did an admirable job of, of uh, catering to, to fans. I, I think... Well, and I think, yeah, like I said before, I think with another movie, I think they might have yeah. more confidence to do stuff well, like that. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, the, the great sort of thing about, like, when, a, like once you, when, when you're able to pull off a movie as successful as this is that the, the creators kind of get the permission to do whatever they want for the next movie. Yeah, because they made whether, it Yeah. Now, whether that's going end to end up being a good thing or a bad thing, um, Given given how good the Sonic scenes were in this one, like where it was more reminiscent of the fan stuff, like well of the um, franchise, like I do have more hope than not that the next movie could be good. But yeah. I, but who knows? It's, it's, it who it knows? would be the most Sonic thing ever to come out with something that really uh, that's surprisingly good and and like uh, makes you optimistic for the future, and then make a sequel that completely fucks it over. <laughs> like yeah. that's just Sonic one hundred and one. Um, but I think I think there are some general like general things like I would say as long as the second movie has Eggman in it I think I think one of my favorite parts of the movie was like Jim Carrey's Eggman and watching him go from like like beef and like this position of like this of power and confidence <clears throat> and like and having that chipped away chipped away chipped away until like the end of the movie where he basically loses his mind and becomes the Eggman that we know him as. Yeah, I I. I like that too. No, you have to. He has to be in if they do another one. I mean, yeah. F like, I, I don't think it's it's hardly my favorite Jim Carrey performance ever or anything, but I think he did a pretty mm. a pretty good job. Well, I mean, um, yeah, and it, he's one of the just more animated and fun things about about the movie. Yeah, it lends well, a lot to I, the I would tone. Say, I'd say Jim Carrey always always performs better in like his more dramatic roles. Like, he's actually a really good actor, eh? Yeah, yeah, no, he's really. Good. But you could tell he was having so much fun with this. Yeah, and that's that makes you yeah. have fun watching it, because yeah. like um yeah like, I mean to talk I, about what I guess I didn't like about the movie um, I, I found like a, I didn't quite buy into the emotional through line as much as I would have liked to. Yeah, and it's because I I've heard a lot about how the performance is really good, but I actually don't really feel that way. I I think, uh, like for example maybe I I don't know what it is, but like the. Tom the cop and and his wife or what I don't know what her name Maddie yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I didn't you, buy yeah. into them at all I I didn't yeah no I did not buy that they were a happy couple well, that had been together for years it felt like just kind of stilted like the way they went through their scenes were, I, it to me it screamed yeah, they, we're in a kids movie um and so I yeah. didn't really buy into the emotion of a lot of the story um, no I can definitely yeah. and and it makes I the whole movie feel a bit sterile when like it's a movie that's meant to like ride or die on its heart. I would have almost rather it have just been um, Sonic and like maybe like he goes around and like he interacts with different people and like learns things from different people. But having like one, I think what what didn't help with the um, the husband and wife character is that the, they're completely original to the movie. We don't like there's no Sonic lore that they're based off of, and it feels I think in some ways it feels weird that um, Sonic would have just pick this random person to be watching over oh then he becomes part of their family and then at the end of the movie he's staying with them well i mean he, he ends like, up hanging out with like he watched everybody but he ends up hanging out with them yeah. because of a coincidence really where he, i mean yeah, he yeah, just yeah, hides yeah. in their no. shed is, is the idea um mm -hmm. I, I mean i get what you're yeah, saying that it's not i don't think you know, it's that they have not much relation to the sonic universe because i mean i was pretty happy just to well, watch no, it as a movie well, well no, no uh, i mean would it really be any like, different if his name was chris thorndike like it's still the same character <laughs> yeah no i'm not I'm not like talking about like specifically like oh like oh it's bad because it's not part of the Sonic universe. But whenever you bring in like original characters that are main characters, it's you're always gonna have this weird dichotomy of them competing with the already established characters. Sure, and, it didn't feel and like... they don't have that much going for them because like I mean yeah. Sonic and Eggman are such huge personalities that like 
yeah. run the movie. And Tom and Maddie uh, are people that exist. Um, I, I, I'd like to, I mean, I think sometimes the characters had good chemistry. I just didn't buy into well, their think, performances as a whole. Um, yeah, well I, think, well, I think part of the issue is like Tom is supposed to be the straight man to Sonic, but I, I, and I think this may have been more of like just a writing directing situation. But I, I feel like he was a bit, he, he war, him warming up to Sonic as quickly as he did, rather than being a, like that, like the for example, like the whole bar fight scene, like, it didn't feel like there was enough like dramatic tension between them, you know, mm. like so, Sonic's just this kid and this guy's kind of like, the adoptive father sort of. Yeah, I, I I don't know how to diagnose it specifically, but I didn't feel like their friendship was super earned. It was like mm-hmm. it was okay. Um, well, it was but it's guilt. like it's, it's like it was enough that like I understood what they were going for, um, but yeah, I don't know. He just fell a bit flat, and I and I felt like, because I, I mean, to me, this movie kind of felt like there there's a it's a pretty sterile, pretty safe Hollywood movie, and there's a bit yeah. of fun in there somewhere, and sometimes you see it, and so I felt like I was watching something, yeah, something well, I, something fun trying to escape out of something a bit boring, and the scenes that were mostly to do with them, I thought were in the, the slightly more boring end of, of the spectrum. Yeah, well, I think it, I, it's almost, it's kind of funny because it almost makes me think that it would have been a bit more interesting like if Maddie was the one to find and, find and shoot Sonic and then uh, Tom was already like in Chicago or, or whatever. Well, Maddie like has Seattle. even less personality. <laughs> well, no, but she, I think part of the reason why she has so less personality is because she's such an important character but plays such a little role in the, like she, she's played up to be like, like the husband of the, well, the wife of the main character. But she has such a little role, and then she shows up, and she barely does anything. Uh, she gets like, uh, what? Well, she gets some smelling salts. I think that's what she does yeah. in this movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of which, um, like, th- I think yeah, I think the one the weird like this is a I don't know if this is a weird take, but you know um how like the the whole scene where they were sneaking him up into the um like to the top of the uh, Seattle whatever. Oh yeah. Um, like that that was just really uncomfortable for me to watch. It was really awkward. I, like, and I and how I, so? I don't know. Well, I guess first off, I feel like that um I feel like the bag joke where like remember the um like is that your kid in the bag? Yeah. I think that worked. I think that worked for the trailer. I forgot but about I it from like the trailer. It, for me, it was one of the few jokes in the in the movie that landed. <laughs> yeah, for but for me, well, Oh, like well, he scene, is that is that your son in the bag? It's like, "No, uh, it, it's not my son." And they're like, "What?" <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just had too much vicarious embarrassment to it. Oh no, yeah, it's definitely like, an I, awkward humor kind of thing. But like, but I feel like the scene just dragged on a little too long. I mean, like, yeah, there. I think the the jokes in this movie are generally fine. There's a few that I thought were quite good. Like I liked um, like there's that guy who works at the police station and like who is completely incompetent. I like that character. Oh yeah, that that was. Um, oh, but, but like there's a, there's a number of there's only a few jokes where I'm like that was a, I appreciate that. There, there's one. <laughs> I really like that line where Robotnik's like, all right, you just stand there and be you. Sliss. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, I, it's really I like stupid, all of but Eggman's. I liked it. Okay, so um, you, you remember the um, you remember that um, scene where like Eggman's doing like that weird workout routine thing? Yeah. Where, like with the, like, the, 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 the virtual reality or AR. Um, yeah, so the scene where the dinosaur comes and like it quote unquote eats his head. Yeah, like, yeah. There was, there was a kid. There's a little kid in like the the theater that was just like what like like did it like was like really confused right. Like, it's like we're like what is <laughs> <laughs> Jim Carrey's too good at performing. I know, I mean, and that was a, that was a really good like like he that was a good performance on that end because it did look like it did look realistic. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, he's a very he's a very good physical and visual actor. Yeah, like, yeah. It's he's. Physical comedy is, is kind of hard to do, I think. Um, and I he's think, a natural. But I think that's... A, I mean, that kind of also goes into why he's so good at some of his dramatic roles, because he can put so much physicality between... Like, I think it's something like um, like Liar Liar, where, like... Yeah. It, where it's like, he, like, he... This is a dramatic moment, but the character's still very over the top, but, like, there's so much raw emotion behind it. He has this just electric energy to tap into. Yeah. Um. I, I did. I yeah. didn't think that he was like like this. What he's doing in the Sonic movie is not. Uh. It's it's not quite what he was doing in like his his youth, where he was like yeah. completely insane and erratic and 
well, not insane, but like he was unpredictable and like he just explode. And in the Sonic movies, like, I mean, I guess he's just a bit older, and so he just isn't full of as many beans. Yeah, and and his character is a bit older too, so it's I guess it's fine. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I think it, but I think it works that. for the character because. Well, because Eggman comes off as more cold and calculated. Even when he's being spontaneous, it's, like, still part of the plan. Or... That is true. That is true. And, and like, like, he, like, he doesn't, like, want to make a fool out, out of himself. And if he is, it's, it's, like, not on purpose. Well, like, if you look at, like, yeah. Ace Ventura, he's just completely, like, boundlessly uh, ridiculous. And is, like, mm-hmm. not aware of how stupid he, he appears. Yeah. It's, like, like, it's, like, when Eggman in this movie, like, acts, like, a bit spontaneous, it's to make other people look like fools. Or right. to point out their idiocracy, or like to that was a good point. Like it's him, or it's him pretending to be like these dumb people he's seeing. See, I like that we have an opportunity, even though it's like a simple movie, to talk about Eggman's character in this kind of depth. Um, yeah, I actually think this is one. Of the, I think this is one of the best written portrayals of Eggman. No, like, he, I think he's a good balance of like, um, like he's comical and he's evil, and they don't feel like contradictory elements. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. like. You look at like the Sat AM Eggman, and he's like this, com- or the comics Eggman, whether it's yeah. Archie or the new comics, and he's this evil, evil motherfucker, and it's really weird. And then you look at like Sonic Boom, and he's like a frenemy, and he's not really that bad. Mm-hmm. And in the games, he's all over the place. Sometimes he's like fucking blowing up half the moon, and sometimes he's like, let's do racing. So like, well, and- I-, I think the the movie one is is like he's the one that well- feels the most like a. A, a character that I can wrap my head around as a person, and I like that. Well, I think the other, I think the other thing too is a lot of the times in the games, I think they they play Eggman as such a joke that it's hard to believe that he's actually the super genius that can make these robot colonies. Yeah, like he they, they play a lot of time they play him up to be just an idiot. Where I think in the this is like one of the few portrayals where I think Eggman actually like he get he's he loses because he gets in over his head. But yeah, he's still, he's like, not just sport. he's not just stupid like and like the humor at him often is like him like being very enthusiastic or being like a like yeah oh. in over his head and and defeated by things that are more powerful yeah. than he could hope to control. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, no, he's a good 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 shit. <laughs> they, yeah. Well, they and, good but job. that's also like why I appreciated like the the transformation at the end where like he, they have him go to like, the Mushroom Planet Beach chapter and kind of, like, lose his mind. Like, because it, it, in some ways, it, it re- in an in almost red Connie way, explains why he's such a madman um, in the later, like... In yeah, the, that, it's going to justify future. so much more ridiculousness in the future behind, well, he got stranded on a rock, pl- on a mushroom planet for, like, two years or, or whatever um, after being in control of everything and, and like being able to look down on everyone suddenly just alone yeah well, well he well he got well he got trapped on a mushroom planet after having his ego shattered yeah yeah no it's a it's like, it's a like bummer, man. being be, being trapped alone on a mushroom planet is not the place you want to be when you're going through like a midlife crisis no no that's a <laughs> that sucks especially if you, if you, a lot of your self confidence comes from crushing other people's self confidence it's a it's funny, I like, I've actually, this has been quite a positive conversation, and, and like, I like the, and it's, I feel like a lot of the movie I've liked better over time, uh, like, as yeah, I've looked no. back on it, where it's like, this could have been so dumb, but, like, it's actually, like, a, it's a totally, it's a pretty good adaptation for, for all the limitations and expectations that it had. Yeah, like, I, I, like, I don't me, like, think, I it think it was amazing, I, but, like. Yeah, well, I think that, I think the second act really bogs it down by being just kind of generic buddy. Yes, yeah. Stuff like there's a there's a lot of scenes in there that didn't need to be there. The first impression for this movie is so good. Like uh yeah. like I was like okay, I don't really know what I'm going to expect and suddenly I see like the like when it just the, the opening title cards like first of all rings on the on the fucking, Yeah, that was that was that was that, that was, was cool. Um and like just the like it, it was like a Marvel movie where it's like got all like the different like uh, properties by Sega, but they're they're all like I am so, it's like I am Golden so Axe, ha- it's Echo the Dolphin. I am, I am so happy Yakuza was all up there. That was, yeah, right. Like give 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 my boy Kazuma some um some. He's on a big. Cred. He's on a popular movie, and yeah. it's like the, all all these classic Sega games that zooms out. It does a Sega, but like orchestral. That was when I was like, mm-hmm. fuck yes. And then the movie begins, yeah. and we're on like South Island or whatever it's called. Uh, and like the the music is from the Sonic Mania trailer. It's like ah, it's so awesome. 
and it's like in mm-hmm. Sonic's world, it's really well rendered, and like I love that Sonic is like has like this guardian owl or whatever. Yeah, One I thing wasn't, I wasn't prepared, I wasn't prepared for that backstory, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I loved it because it was like um. I mean, one of the things I don't like about the actual Sonic canon is that, like, it's a franchise based on animals, but they all look the same, even regardless of how different of an animal they are. Like, it's like they're all... Like, I feel like, uh, like, Espio the Chameleon should be, like, long and weird looking rather than just Sonic with a different head. Um, and so I liked how so- there was another anthropomorphic animal in the movie that actually just looked like a different animal. Um, yeah. It was like, that's how I think Sonic's world should be. Um, yeah. So it was cool. Like... The yeah, echidnas sure can look like him because echidnas about... are just hedgehogs that are slightly different, so yeah. whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Sonic being born just with this special power um, without much explanation, but maybe given that Tails shows up with two tails at the end, they might be able to have some explanation. There might be something, sequel. yeah. I mean, who could... I mean, I imagine it seems like a natural place to go to, to take have more than movie take place in one of the other dimensions next time because... I don't know. Yeah. They'll have more money and they can make more cool stuff happen. Um, yeah. Though I would also be happy with them just using a bunch of like cool city set pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think the other weird thing that the movie like um, canon wise was the inclusion of that Speed Force thing. And while I do think in the end it paid off giving um, Eggman a chance to actually be a threat towards Sonic, so we actually had some real stakes at the end. Like, yeah, that that was neat. Have, have, yeah, having Sonic's quills like being like the source of like unlimited <laughs> power. Was both interesting and a really odd choice. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's funny because, uh, I mean, I guess as Sonic fans or, l- like, we just we look at Sonic Speed as something that is beyond explanation or, or doesn't matter. It's like we just take it for granted. It's interesting thinking of like a, of like a film director looking at that and be like, yeah. how do we make that a plot element? It's like, huh, I, I wouldn't have even well, thought to. And I think it's a but, it's a a pretty neat idea. Uh, my only but, real I, issue, I think, with Sonic's power in this movie is that um, it means that there is no tension until the end because he is... It's yeah. not like he's just fast. Like, he's b- hilariously broken in his speed. Like Yeah, but, but, that's, but that's also kind of the funny thing about Sonic as a series is that the only tension there is your ability to pull off the stunts that Sonic would easily be able to do because... By all means, Sonic is kind of an OP thing until we get like the godlike creatures coming in with the epic orchestra music. Yeah, <laughs> true. But, but like at the very least, like Game Sonic couldn't even begin to do the shit. Movie Sonic, Movie Sonic would kick the shit out of Game Sonic, yeah. and like, and like less than a second, he wouldn't even be able to process it. It's like the amount of things he can do, and that yeah. It, well, it's like the. I mean, the whole stopping time is kind of like ridiculous. Yeah. Like, 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 when, when, when will we get our our um, bullet time in a Masonic game? Yeah, exactly. I I I guess in the movie, like, the point of it is to is that's kind of a comedy. So like it it's like yeah. a it means that you can just have fun making them do silly shit. Um, well, and I and I think yeah. at the end it does pay off because it it gives them a, a means for Eggman to even compete with. Sonic. Yeah, yeah. It, it raises the stakes when he uses the quill power. I think that's really cool. Um, because- it does. Cause, sorry, because like even like even like in the regular game, Sonic is still much stronger than Eggman. It's more um, like there's real. As I said, the the stakes in the especially the classic games is just if you're good enough to beat it, because Sonic could trounce Eggman easily. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. Like being able to use his own power against them, I thought that was a good raising of the stakes moment. Or rather, the creating of the stakes because there weren't any before. Yeah. I, I yeah. will say that, like, um, uh, this isn't really a problem to me, but like, this plot element makes it seem like that it's unlikely that the Chaos Emeralds really have space to appear in these movies because, like, we already have the MacGuffin, which is I mean, Sonic's but, loose uh, that, hair. But that's but that's that but that one that, that raises the question if the Magu- if the Emeralds are related to the MacGuffin. Like, let's say, like in future movies, Sonic's like Speed Force. Like maybe has a direct because, relationship to the Chaos Emeralds, you know. Yeah, and that's why Eggman starts going after the Emeralds because if they make, if he has the direct source, it makes him more powerful than Sonic. Yeah, I just I don't know if I think the Chaos Emeralds are like that interesting but of a the, concept. I think they're cool in the games, and I think probably why they're cool in the game, or at least in the in the early games, is that like they're this kind of those games don't really have a strong narrative, and it means that there's a sort of lore in the background if you look beyond the surface yeah. but um, well i kind of see that but in a I movie it feels the, um, a bit trite 
Well, I say the Chaos Emerald is kind of similar to like the um, Infinity Stones, where they are kind of this MacGuffin that grant power. So let's say in the next movie that we learn that the Chaos Emeralds are what gave everybody their power. Like, like that's why Tails has two tails. That's why. So like, it, it's like kind of like this powerful mutating thing, and like people like animals born around like the the Chaos Emeralds or whatever. Like that's like, that's a justification for Sonic having his powers. Maybe that's why everybody has their powers. That yeah, are weird, and that's why we have some some weird animals in the Sonic franchise. I guess it just means that like, look, I just think we're too close to Infinity War to like. Uh, to make a movie Sonic, about Sonic, the movie is the greatest crossover. It's the most ambitious right, right. crossover of all time. Yeah, we we crossed over the guy from Westworld and Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean it's like everyone's got it in their one of the biggest movies ever in recent history was uh, were those Avengers movies that like use mystical different colored gems. And, like, they were really well done in those movies, and each of them had, like, a... Like, there was some so, it, specific thing you had to do to get them. It was built up over a long time. It feels like you can't follow that up. It's like, fuck it, whatever. Emerald's not well, a I thing. Well, I don't... But, but, we're, but we're only talking about in the context of blockbuster movies. It's, like... The Infinity Stones have been around forever because of the comics. I know, but like, Sonic is a blockbuster the, movie. Like, if you're going to make another Sonic blockbuster movie, you, you, you're kind yeah, of in the but, same space as like, Inve- Avengers. Yeah, but Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, like, fucking copied Dragon Ball. I don't know. Maybe it was the other way around. Like, we got a franchise. We got, we got a history of um, franchise stealing from, like, well, from the concept stealing. Yeah, like, well. Super Sonic, Super Sonic. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's Super Sonic. There's, there's a Death Egg, which is obviously a Death Star. But, like, are you going to yeah. are you gonna see those things in the Sonic movie? I don't know. I, th- I, know, I, I kind of wonder if the Chaos Emeralds are actually, like, specifically supposed to be um, a play on the Infinity Stones. Because Maybe I, I think it's just a generic concept in general, and and I think yeah, um, yeah. But I, I mean, honestly, like, I I Sonic. would be more interested in using the Master Emerald, because uh, it yeah. seems at least it's kind of more of its own thing. And I like the whole concept where there's like an island that floats in the sky, but only if the emeralds there. That rules. Get, I get, get, for get the, the more interesting mo- ones. I can't wait for the Sonic movie. We have the literal Death Star blow up Earth. Uh, or and piss then, like, on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you know. They're gonna have a Sonic movie where Sonic actually pisses on the moon. You know that's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, I don't want to think about Sonic's CG dick. <laughs> I, I uh, t- no, we got it. It'll be like Crazy Frog. Um, what was I gonna say? If they like, if they make Jim Carrey say, "I've come to make an announcement," at any point in the next <laughs> movie, just that an- I've alone. I've come to make an announcement. And then he could say anything he wants <laughs> after that. It's like. <laughs> That would be perfect. Um, yeah, uh, it would be one of the, like I really liked how they did the Sanic meme in uh, in the movie. Yeah, I think yeah, was, that was really, I, I that, was, I, that was put a smile on my face. It was right at the beginning of the movie where it's full of fan service. Um, I know, and it's like it's it's such a it's such an like an authentic like it doesn't feel just dropped in like it's a wink, but like it's also funny even if you, if you don't know what that meme is because it's just yeah. a shitty drawing. Like, well, like in some ways, it's in some ways it's the way it's the way of the um. Uh, the creators to be like you know, winking and on at the fans are like yeah we made this movie for you yeah like yeah it's like we've, we've got some fun stuff in, in store for you guys um so, yeah I like the Sonic movie I, I think it um yeah. I mean they did a pretty good job of adapting a, a pretty difficult to adapt franchise mm-hmm. um they this well, is they made the character look fantastic i i like i want to download yeah. i mean <clears throat> buy the blu-ray of this later <laughs> just so i can um i just oh. want to look at him <laughs> like i don't know I, I i think they did a quite a good job even though the movie's just okay uh, it yeah. is it distracted me from my crush turning me down <laughs> for like for oh. like an hour and a half and that's oh. nice that that was a nice little fucking escape in a yeah. sense uh, so I'm thanks, glad. thanks, Sega. Thanks, Jim Carrey. And Jim uh, thanks, Jim Carrey and Sega. I would uh, be remiss to not mention the fact that the people who reanimated the movie got shut down right afterwards. Uh, that yeah, sucks. That's, that's, Let's like, yeah, that's, like I just want to mention it because it's like you know, oh, these guys did such a good job for the fans. You know, they really turned it around. Yeah, but they also kind of exploited a team of hardworking, talented people to do it. I know wow. this is just the industry. CG artists, man. I feel like they're always getting fucked over. And it's like movies like live off of CG nowadays. These guys gotta, I don't know, unionize. They gotta, they gotta figure out how to not get like 
okay. chewed up and spat out by this industry because people are going to keep lunch, doing it. Lunch, lunch, you need to be the Bernie Sanders of CG artists. Right. I've got to be. Someone's got to be the Bernie Sanders because they're getting once like, again. I'm asking for your assistance yeah. in unionizing the CG artists. But seriously, man. It's a bummer. The same thing happened with Detective Pikachu. It might have actually been the same uh, guys. Uh, I think it may have, yeah. Like, come on, guys. Get your act together. Good job in the yeah, movie, I, but, like, fucking treat your animators with respect. Yeah. Preach. Uh, anyways, um, I, I think we should, uh, as we're finishing up, um, closing thoughts on um, the, the credit sequence. Uh, oh, this is uh, the... Sorry, this credit sequence or the mid credit yeah, scene like, or all of it? The credit, like the credits, like well, like well, all of like I'm, I'm talking about like specifically like that um the Sonic like this the classic Sonic um thing they did with the credits. Uh, I I think it's kind of cute. I get the idea. I I think the execution is pretty uh, uh not great. Uh, I mean, <laughs> look, it doesn't. First of all. Many people have pointed this out, but the song that they use for that segment, which was written for the movie, has a bunch of, like, arcade sounds in it. Like, you know, like, uh, but Sonic was kind of beyond that point. Like, they, they sound, it sounds like Space Invaders or something. It's like, and it's like, Sonic was, was like the cutting edge of, of fucking technology when it came out on the Genesis. So that felt like a bunch of, like, higher ups who didn't really know what it was about. The sprite work in the sequence is terrible. Uh, it, it's just it's just amateur, especially like the rappers look like shit. Like, like there are so many like uh freaking pixel artists on. I've seen so much great Sonic fan art and pixel art. Like that was that sequence was made by people who obviously don't really understand the limitations or or like the art style of that genre. Also annoys me how Robotnik looks like Jim Carrey, but Sonic has his game design. Like at least just recolor his arms or something. It's weird and it's. I don't know, but it was cute, right? It's it's a it's like a two D side scrolling version of the movie. They go on the half pipe, and he runs down the building. It's 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 okay, uh, but uh, yeah. Also, that song, like, just while I'm talking about it, it's they just rap about like you know having money and and bitches and stuff, and it's like this is a kids yeah, movie about Sonic. Like, what are you doing? The pumpkin Hill rap. They should have played the Pumpkin Hill rap. Uh, they had to like draw a line somewhere with the fans. So I would have it would have blown my fucking mind if they did a pumpkin <laughs> hill thing. But that's well, that's asking for too much. Uh, I mean, it's it's a, it's, yeah. it's the same thing as like asking them to put in um fucking uh, escape from the city or with um, when he's actually like running in the city. Oh jeez, that would have been actually that would have been the wrong point to to do that song because yes. it's a dangerous point. Actually, I I know it's so it's so hard to stop talking about Sonic. But I really wish that when Sonic was fighting Eggman instead of just generic orchestral. Ba ba ba! Like that played like a cool remix of one of the the songs that plays when you fight Eggman. Because that would be a reference that wouldn't intrude on the regular public who would be confused. It would be like, just it would make sense. Uh, but yeah, credits sequence. Uh, it's eh, it's okay. It's certainly not as cool as like the shit at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Post credit scene. Uh was all right like i i made a tweet about how um there was a little girl sitting behind me that like gasped with excitement like <gasps> like to see that there was more movie and that oh, that made my day uh because yeah. i don't know just that it made it made me happy that that sonic is continuing on to the the new kids um the scene itself was okay it's fine can i can i just low-key out there as like like throw maybe a controversial take i thought tails kind of looked kind of bad me too i don't know why people are like oh, i looked great i'm like no they didn't nail him uh, the way they nailed sonic he looked a bit to me like a uh like like a fursuit or something like it, well, it wasn't well, he, quite there so to, me, it looked like, to me it almost looked like they went too far the um other way where he looked a bit too much like a game character put over uh real life whatever was going um, on i think it, maybe it was his face i just thought like like yeah. sonic looks perfect uh and tails looked eh. But, you know, they got uh, they can make some adjustments in the next movie, hopefully. Yeah. He wasn't terrible. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just glad that we're going to get a second movie, but I was I was a bit disappointed to see Tails looking like that after saying Sonic. Yeah, me too. It almost, it almost makes me feel like it was like an afterthought rather than... Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was another thing that, that they put in after the, uh, yeah. the re Sonic redesign, where they decided to put in more fan service. 
I, I am thinking that in the second movie, um, honestly, I, I don't, some people are talking about Knuckles and stuff. And I think Tails is enough. Like, if it's going to be like Sonic 2, like only, only um, Tails is in Sonic 2, right? Well, yeah, I like that as a parallel to, to the original games. Yeah. But um, I also just think like the, I mean, this, and this version of Sonic, like human characters are important about as much as Sonic is. Um, and it'll be weird to suddenly like give the movie to like a bunch of like little animals. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like you gotta like if you want to make a proper sequel, you have to involve Tom and Maddie or, or whoever, because um, yeah. that's kind of just what this universe and then, is. Uh, uh, and then and then they're gonna have a kid, and then they're gonna be giving the kid all attention, and Sonic's gonna feel like he's not getting the attention he deserves, and he's gonna run off, and then he's gonna learn that they still love him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope they don't just can continue to completely infantilize Sonic. I... Well, because uh, well, that's that's like the one like buddy like buddy animal, um, like trope that they, that they always do in the sequels. Yeah, I hope. I well, if if Tails is involved, then that should change that dynamic a bit because Tails well, no, is someone who happen? lives in. No, but no, but oh right. But what's gonna happen? But what's gonna happen is Tails gonna come in like Knuckle. Uh, so it's be like, oh, I've got real family over here. They don't want me anymore. No, but I don't. Then, I don't want. Then, I don't want Sonic to become an, making friends with Tails because he doesn't have enough attention at home. Tails is meant to look up to Sonic and be like, like Sonic should be friends with him. No, but he also but, has his but, own but shit can, going on. Tails should be the one on the back foot in that sense. Yeah, but no, but I know, but it's. it's I'm just like, so it's like, it's like, well, like, oh, Sonic's got this person that was looking for him and who looks up to him, and I'm like Sonic's like this mentor, and he's got like he's getting attention from Tails. And he's not getting attention from the family that took him in that he cares about because they have right. a kid now. So he's not needed anymore. So he's gonna go out, go out with um Tails because Tails actually needs him. And then Sonic and Maddie are gonna be like, "Where the fuck Sonic?" And they go out looking for him. And then they're gonna get in danger. And then Sonic's gonna be like, "Why'd you come after me?" And then I thought you didn't want me anymore. And he's gonna be like, "Oh, we still we still love you, Sonic. You still you're still our friend." That that and was then, that was a rapid um rapid script pitch you just gave me. <laughs> You just gave me like a whole movie layout in like two seconds. Well, because that's that's every like sequel to a buddy anime. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Buddy animal flick, like, like at some point Sonic's gonna have to separate from Maddie and Tom. I mean, he's gotta leave the nest. He's he's gotta leave the nest. I mean, he, as I as I as I seen with I'm um, looking in the <laughs> Play Store at the Sonic Forces um game, they have a crossover with movie Sonic, and they refer to that as Teen Sonic. So. Maybe maybe as we go on, Sonic's gonna mature a bit and grow up. But so so right, then, guess, and then they'll add Man Sonic to the game. <laughs> yes, I am Man Sonic. And like, what I are you say, talking about? Watch. Sonic is a teen. Sonic is a I teen to man, begin with. I am Man Sonic, and I I say watch Bros in a Landfill every other week for their podcast, and then every other week in Mondays too for um, their Let's Play videos. Uh, I Sonic Man. Uh, who who have matured no, with no, a no, very man deep, Sonic. deep voice? I am Man Sonic, and <laughs> I am, <laughs> I, and I am an edgy, edgy mature man who says, "Go to the at Landfill Bros, hit um, thumbs up and like all their tweets, and subscribe to them on Twitter and follow them on YouTube." And um, also, I am Man Sonic, and I say, "Go to Lunch Billions YouTube channel to watch his 2019 Game of Game of the Year awards." Oh, thanks, Sonic. Uh, that that is a much more valuable use of your time than listening to me, Man Sonic. And this has been Bros in a Landfill, uh, sponsored by Man Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Man Sonic. As a man, I am now officially allowed to use the word fuck. <laughs> <laughs>